If you're working with the Next.js app writer, you know all about the CSS and JS styling problems that came along with React server components. You can do style modules, you can do Tailwind, but you couldn't really do CSS and JS until now. Panda CSS is awesome. Not only does it give you CSS and JS that's compatible with RSCs, it also has all of that awesome Tailwind shorthand that we love. And it's got patterns that make it super easy to do layout. And it's got a feature that I think has the potential of changing how we do enterprise style design systems forever. It's super exciting. Can't wait to show you that. But in the meantime, of course, Brilliant is the sponsor of today's video. More about them in just a bit. Let's get right into it. All right, this is the homepage of Panda CSS. It's a project that does CSS and JS. It's closely related with Chakra. I don't know if Chakra is now based on it or what. I haven't looked into Chakra lately. I should definitely do that. In the meantime, of course, let's go take a look at the project that we're going to build. All right, what we're going to build is Barbenheimer. If you don't know what Barbenheimer is, it is the contrast between Barbie and Oppenheimer. It was a very big thing in mid-July 2023. Probably not as you're looking at this now. Who knows? Anyway, it's a voting app. It's pretty simple. You hit two options. You click on one. You click on the other. It registers votes. It has some server action stuff built into it. So if you want to learn about server actions, we're going to look at that too. Of course, all of this styling is done in Tailwind, which is what you get out of the box now, effectively, as one of the options when you start an XJS application. You get two options. You get either just basic style modules or you get Tailwind. So we've built this with Tailwind. We're going to go and convert this application to Panda CSS. Panda has some very high quality documentation. Once you click on Get Started, you get a list of all of the different frameworks that you can use, including our friend Next.js. And then with Next.js, of course, you get two options, App Writer or Pages Writer. We're going to use the App Writer variant. And I'll just walk you through this. Let's go back into our VS Code. So what's running right now is Voting TW, the Tailwind version of our voting application. We're going to go build Voting-Panda. And of course, all of this code is available to you for free on GitHub in a link in the description right down below. We use PMPM to create our Next.js application at the latest, and we use PMPM as our package manager. We'll call it Voting Panda. We want TypeScript. We want ESLint. We do not want Tailwind CSS. We don't want the source directory, and we want the app router. Alias is fine. Now over in Voting Panda, we're going to install Panda. And then much like you do with Tailwind, you want to initialize it to create the Panda configuration file. Now we're going to make some small changes to the package JSON. First, we had a step for prepare. Prepare is what runs the Panda code generation system. Panda does everything at build time. It's going to look across all of our files, see what CSS and JS we're using, and then build a styles.css that has all of those styles in it. Then we upgrade dev to remove .next, which will remove any cache files before we start. Next, we need to tell Panda where the files are that may use that CSS and JS. So let's go take a look at the Panda config. And we want to include files from the app directory. If you have other directories like slash components, you're going to want to add that here. Then we want to remove the global CSS and replace it with these layers. Now we're actually in a place where we can run the app, and that's going to create our style system. Now, just running pmpm dev has created this style system directory, which has all of our style system in it. Nice. Now, let's go over to page.tsx and remove a lot of this. And we can bring in the CSS function from that style system. That's what we use to declare the basics of our CSS. And we just have a big old white screen, so let's go replace that with our slate background. To do that, over in our panda config, we declare global CSS. And we say that within the body, we want the background to be Slate 900, so a dark version of Slate. Let's take a look again. And it looks like we're ready to roll. All right, for a little bit at least, I'm going to put the original Tailwind stuff on the left-hand side of the display and our new Panda stuff on the right-hand side of the display. So let's go take a look at the main. So here's our Tailwind version, and I'll just plop it in there. Now, obviously, this isn't going to work because Tailwind doesn't exist. Now, how are we going to convert this? Well, you can, could convert it by hand, which I'm not exactly psyched about. But there are two cool utilities here. 
The first is a web version of TW to Panda. You put your original React source code on the left-hand side, and it automatically converts it to the code on the right-hand side. Now, I was so inspired by Panda that I actually built my own command line version of TW to Panda. It has a slightly different engine in it, so it's not as comprehensive as that original web UI, but it does cover a lot of the common use cases, and it has a very cool function that I'm going to show you right now. Now, I've installed this globally, so just in my command line, I've got TW to Panda. I've also installed in my VS Code edit with shell command. It's a plugin that allows you to take whatever your selection is, route that through the standard in of a command, and whatever comes out the standard out goes back into your editor. It's really nice for doing stuff like this. I'm going to bring up edit with shell run command, and I'm going to say TW to Panda. Now it's taken that original main line, run it as standard in through that TW to Panda, and created our output, which was our Panda version using CSS. The original Tailwind has MX Auto as a class name. The CSS and JS has MX colon Auto. So Panda has basically all of the Tailwind shorthand baked right into it. Another thing that's really cool is how Panda handles responsive CSS. So in Tailwind, we had MD colon PX5, meaning that we had a padding of 5 in the X plane for medium breakpoint and above. In, in Panda, we simply specify the breakpoint, MD, and then we say whatever we want, in this case, PX5 on MD. You can also do the inverse. You can start with the key, in this case, PX, and then you can specify an object that has all the different breakpoints in it. For example, base is 0 in this case where for medium breakpoint above, you have five. All right, I think the next thing to do is bring in the header. So let's bring in the header. So the header is a component that brings in a total number of votes. It is just a flex box that runs the entire width. And then within that, there's a first section that grows that has just the title in it, in this case, Barbenheimer. And then on the other side, it's got the number of votes. So to make this happen in Tailwind, we use flex. Let's see what we do in Panda. Again, I'll run my Tailwind to Panda. And now it's bringing in this H stack. So what is H stack? So H stack is a Panda pattern. There are a bunch of patterns in Panda right out of the box that do things like stacks and containers. We're going to use the H stack. H stack is a flex based pattern. It uses Flexbox to lay things out horizontally. There's also a V stack that does the same thing, but does a flex call, so vertically. And this is all baked right in. So to bring that in, we need to bring it in from patterns. Now, we don't have to say display flex because the H stack is doing that for us, but we're adding on a bunch of different attributes, in this case, like background color and color and font size and shadow and so forth in the H stack invocation itself. And that just layers on the extra stuff. Let's go try this out. I'll say we have 10 total votes. And there we go. Looks really good. So the next thing I want to do is build out those cards. For that, I need some assets. So I'm going to go and bring in the assets from the original project. I brought in assets, which includes Barbie, Oppenheimer, and the Versus logo. I've also included voting, which is our server actions for voting. All right, let's bring all this in. And let's start migrating these components one by one. We'll start with the progress bar. That's at the bottom of the card. Again, we use that TW to Panda. And there's really not much going on with this one outside of basic CSS for the formatting of that bar. So let's go on the versus image. Again, I'll run TW Panda, but this time I'm going to run TW Panda with explain on it. And what explain does is it tells you everything that it's done. For example, it found the relative class and it converted that into position relative. Found W10, converted that into W10. So pretty slick, right? By using either of these utilities, you're basically teaching yourself how to use Panda by converting the knowledge that you already know with Tailwind into Panda by letting it do it for you, and then, in this case, getting some explanations about it. How cool is that? Of course, we don't need them. So let's bring in the card. The card is what wraps the movie image and then has that progress bar on the bottom. So in the layout, you get card versus image and then card. So let's go and convert this one. Now, this one wants a VStack because we're using a Flexbox oriented vertically. So we have the image, and then we've got the bar along the bottom, and those are stacked together. So we need to bring in VStack as well. 
Now, currently we are a React server component, so I can't do things like on-click. So temporarily, I'm going to remove the on-click from the card. And we're doing this as an RSC first because I want to show you, if we disable JavaScript, that this whole thing still works. So we're getting awesome components off of the server fully styled using CSS and JS. All right, the next thing to do is bring in the final layout. Now, for the moment, I'm going to keep the tailwind, but I am going to comment out the on clicks. And I'm just going to set the percentages to something simple. And let's see what it looks like. All right, this is looking really good. Of course, the cards are now completely stretched across, and yes, isn't in the right spot. So we need to set up the layout around the cards. That actually starts here with our grid. Let's see what TW Japanda comes up with. Aha, so we're going to use a helper called grid to implement this. And we're going to say that for the medium breakpoint above, we want 11 columns for our grid. So let's bring in our grid pattern, as well as grid item, which is the pattern that you use for items within that grid. All right, let's take the left-hand side card, run it through TW2 Panda. And now we're saying that in medium breakpoint above, we have a five column span for this card. All the other stuff is just margin. And we can use the same thing for the other card. Now we get to our versus image. And this is kind of tricky because it's both a grid item and in of itself a flex box because it uses a flex box to put that versus right in the middle by doing a justify and an align content to center. So how do we do that? How do we have two patterns working on the same element? Well, let's see what TW Panda says. Well, TW Panda says that we use both the HDAC and grid item, and that we use CX to join those together. So let's bring in CX. And let's see, does it work? Oh, wow, that is looking really slick. Can we make it smaller? Yes, we can. Can we make it bigger? Yes, we can. Fully responsive. OK, let's go bring up the inspector. Now I'm going to turn off JavaScript. And now let's refresh. And look, it still works. There's not any JavaScript running on the page, and we're still running CSS and JS. How cool is that? Fully responsive, the whole thing. Awesome. Let's bring back some JavaScript. And now let's make this a client component so we can use those server actions to actually add some interactivity here. So first we define that this is a client component because we want to use use effect and use state. We want to use use effect to load the initial counts, and we want to use use state to store the current counts. So down in our home, we want to use use state to define the total number of votes. And then we want that use effect on the startup to go and get the votes. And then we have total votes we get by adding the two together. Let's go and update the header. And then we need to uncomment out our on clicks and uncomment out our support for those on clicks. And there we go. Let's try it out. All right, now it's giving us an error because we don't have server actions enabled in our Next.js config, and they are still an experimental feature. So let's go enable them. To enable them, we go to our Next config. And then within experimental, we say that server actions are true. And now let's see. That is so cool. Nice. So what's happening is on every click, so we call the vote server action, which is actually an asynchronous function, although TypeScript doesn't seem to know that. We can then get the response from that, which is the updated vote tally. So let's go take a look at the implementation. So notably, up at the top of this file, it's use server. That tells Next.js that this is server actions. And then within that, you've got get votes, which gets the current number of votes. And then vote, and you give it who you want to vote for. And it gives you back the updated tally after it adds one to whoever you voted for. So now that you're more familiar with the fundamentals of Panda, let's talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant, and how they can teach you the fundamentals of computer science to help you in your next job interview. I know a lot of you are concerned about the impact of AI on the programming field. And I can tell you, you're going to feel a lot better if you get ahead of it by understanding how AI works. And there's no better place to learn that than Brilliant.org. They have a fantastic section on AI. 
And back in the advanced math section, you can learn about the differential equations that are the fundamental building blocks of AI. Another way of becoming a great engineer and getting that confidence is by learning the fundamentals. A lot of you are self-taught, like me, or you've gone to a boot camp where you might not have gotten data structures and algorithms. Well, they're all here, right on brilliant, and super easy and engaging and fun to learn. I had to learn things like data structures and algorithms from a dry and boring textbook. You get to learn them in a fun way on brilliant.org. And I'm here to tell you, you're probably going to remember them a lot better than I do. So join me over on Brilliant. You'll get the first 30 days for free if you click on brilliant.org slash Jack Harrington. There's a link in the description right down below. And you know what? To sweeten up the deal, the first 200 of you that sign up will get 20% off of your annual Brilliant subscription. It's a great value. Check it out right now. It's so great to be sponsored by Brilliant. Now, let me tell you a little bit about why I was super excited about Panda. Yes, it's cool. It's got the CSS and JS, and that's awesome. But what really got me were the recipes. So let's take a look at this button recipe. What it allows us to do is set up a base set of styling and then give variant options. Like, for example, in this case, you've got the visual, which can be either solid or outline. you got the size. It can be a small or a large button. And you can do this and define all the CSS styling and create essentially a headless styled component, which is just freaking amazing. And then you can go and take that and use it in Svelte or Solid or React, and you can reuse that across all of the different options. Now, let me show you how you can do this using that TW Panda tool. So I'm going to bring back progress bar. And I'm going to grab out the class name for the container. And then I'm going to run TW Panda with the CVA option. And what this does is it basically does the exact same transform as we had before, but it creates one of these CVA invocations. So we need to bring in CVA. And then we can call this the progress container. And we can invoke progress container where we used to do the CSS. Now let's do the same thing for that bar. And we'll just call this one progress. And we can use that in place of the progress bar. That's a lot cleaner. But it gets even better. Because let's say, for example, we want a color prop. We can just say that we have a bunch of variants with different colors. And all we're doing is just changing the background color depending on the color that you want. You can change as many attributes as you want. In this case, we're just going to use that background color. And we can say that the default variant is blue. Now let me get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Now down here in our progress, we can see that we have color as an option. And we can say that we want red, for example. And now we have red progress bars. Now let's go take a look back at this. So take a look at these CVAs that we've created. Is there any connection to React at all in these CVAs? No. That means that we could reuse these CVAs in any environment. Vue, Solid, Svelte, whatever Panda supports, we can use these CVAs in. And that makes our design system and our styling completely transportable between the different frameworks. How cool is that? Now, you can see why that got me excited enough to create my own open source Tailwind to Panda project. Of course, there's a link to that in the description as well. If you want to contribute to it and make it even more comprehensive or add more features to it, I would love to see that happen. In the meantime, of course, thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you hit that subscribe button, I would really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next Blue Collar Coder.